The first day that I met Coach Reed um, was at the facility. Uh, we had like the uh, meetings, like the top 30 visits. And yeah. so that was the first time I really met him. I'm, I'm going to give you all the inside scoop. Uh, Matt Nagy, who was our, our quarterback coach Snacks. now, was the offense coordinator then. He, he really liked me, so he gave me the plays they were going to go over the night before. So Coach Reed's finding out here live on New Heights Podcast. Oh, my God. And so, Snaggy. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you an answer to the test. You. Let's go. And so, uh, yeah. So, of course, I crushed the meeting. I stayed up all night studying those plays. And so, Man, this kid is locked in. We got ourselves there. <laughs> <laughs>actually rose the stock of Matt Nagy when he needed him most. Very nice thing to do. Very nice thing to do. Yeah, gave him gave him some love and and that's from the uh, the Kelsey Brothers new podcast. We should it's give uh, give credit there yeah. for people that are just listening. So that was Patrick Mahomes on the Kelsey Brothers new podcast. And um yeah, that is the that's the best thing Matt Nagy's ever done. Uh and and who else you you're you know, you're always a draft nick. I forget. So Mahomes I think was 10th overall. That year, they, they trade traded up. up. They traded yep. up to get him. But who were the quarterbacks that were taken ahead of him? Trubisky. Trubisky. Yeah. That's right. That's and the big who one. They traded up for. Yep. Who they also Watson, traded up. Watson was that year. Watson Trubisky was, that. was the only one to go in the top five. But Watson went twelfth. Yes. Yeah. Watson went twelfth. But Mahomes. But in terms of who went uh, who went ahead of him, Trubisky. They traded up to get him at two or three. They moved from three to two they because to Miles three. Garrett was the number one That's overall. Right. Miles pick. Garrett was the number one overall. So yeah, they take, they took Trubisky when Mahomes was sitting there. <laughs> yep. And but was, I would yeah. argue I have this I have this argument, and then we can move on. Um, as brilliant as Mahomes is, and he is brilliant, you know, and everyone knew coming out of college he had a cannon of an arm. But he wasn't like amazing at Texas Tech when his coach was Cliff Kingsbury. I Patrick Mahomes does not become Patrick Mahomes if Andy Reid's not his coach. Absolutely, is, is my take. And he, he got to sit the year. They were one of the rare teams that was willing to sit a quarterback yep. in an era where teams don't sit there. They right. traded up into the and, and top he, ten, and to he get got him. to learn from Alex Smith, who's a who's a classy guy, and not, a, and not a you know oh sorry Rook, I don't yeah, care good luck out you there. know good yeah. luck out there. Yeah. I mean Alex Smith is a good dude, and so yeah, I mean, and obviously then you know Mahomes has made the most of that amazing opportunity, but I think that when you think about what Andy Reid's done with quarterbacks over the years, you know he made AJ Feely relevant, relevant. You know <laughs> Jeff Garcia, like you know yeah. look at Donovan McNabb on any other team other than Philadelphia. Exactly. Right? I mean like. Just whatever, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Cobb. Remember Kevin Cobb? Yeah. Like, I mean, we could just go through obscure Eagles quarterbacks over the Worked years. out well for both sides. Yes. Patrick Mahomes That's linking up with Andy Reid. Thanks to Matt Nagy. Right, Learn Nagy. something new every yeah. day. All right, it is time for Fantasy Rich, Fantasy Poor, and who better to kick it off with than Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs, who are favored by two points, traveling to a tough Cincinnati Bengals team. The highest total for the week, Pat Corain, over under is set at 53. Why, though, is this a fantasy-rich environment? Well, Matthew, you just set it up. I mean, this is an offense that's built to maximize Patrick Mahomes. They're not afraid to, you know, like just lean into the passing game and go really pass-heavy. They understand that Mahomes is going to be the engine of their offense, and that's the way they've built their offense. Tua Tonga by Loa leads the NFL in EPA per play, which is, you know, an efficiency metric. But Patrick Mahomes leads the NFL in EPA per game because he's able to drop back more often. And that's a skill to be able to drop back that often and still be highly efficient. And the Chiefs lead the NFL with a 13% pass rate over expected. So although some teams have shifted to the run against the Bengals, I don't expect the Chiefs to do that. I think they're going to play this through Patrick Mahomes. They're going to play this like a shootout. They're going to know that Joe Burrow is going to be throwing on the other side. And Joe Burrow will be throwing on the other side. They've been extremely pass heavy over their last six games with a 12% pass rate over expected right behind where the Chiefs are. They're also prioritizing the pass on first down, which helps out Joe Burrow, keeps the offense very efficient. And then, of course, they have reinforcements coming with Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon. I think both guys, obviously, they're going to help the offense overall, but they're going to help the offense specifically in the quick game. Jamar Chase is used on wide receiver screens at a much higher rate than the other wide receivers, which could help against the Chiefs pass rush. That's pretty good. And then Joe Mixon's been used frequently as an outlet, which I also think will help against this Chiefs defense. So it's sort of interesting here. Just while you were talking, um, so got an alert from the Fantasy Life app, which is great, must have. Um, and uh, this is a tweet from uh, Jeff Hobson, who covers uh, covers Cincinnati, does a really good job. And Zach, meaning Zach Taylor, head coach of the Bengals. Zach says Mixon's still in protocol and decision mm. pending. If he's cleared, he should be good to go. He has worked in limited fashion. So... We expect Joe Mixon back, but it doesn't sound like it's 100%. 
definitely going to be back. He did also say, by the way, that, uh, you know, uh, J- Zach Taylor says Jamar Chase has indicated that he feels comfortable to play against the Chiefs. That is hashtag Bengals, and that's from Kelsey Conway, who also covers the team for the Inquirer. So, um, uh, anyway, so, yes, we should get Chase back, but I just, as long as we're talking about this game, just mention, like, hey, don't get out of, uh, don't, don't be dropping some IJP Ryan right just yet, some IJP because right. there's, there's, there's a non-zero chance that he has a significant role in a high-scoring game. Yeah, and I think he'd be used similarly in the passing game to the yes. way Mixon is. Yeah. Getting, getting away from some of the stars in this game, the flex players, Pat, when you look at the uh, the Bengals side of things with Tyler Boyd, who's had some huge weeks here and there, but Chase is back. Hayden Hurst, who's had a nice year at tight end, taking over from C.J. Uzama, who was there last year. Did these guys get a bump at all? I think Hurst does, uh, just partly because we desperately need tight ends. You know, like Tyler Higby's now unstartable. Like, <laughs> we're losing guys that we yeah. were start. So. Jamar Chase being back, I think, obviously he's going to get his targets, but he also draws a ton of defensive coverage, so I think he should help open up things for other receivers, and, you know, Hurst in particular with that tight end eligibility jumps out to me. Barry, on the Chiefs side of things, is this a juju week, or are we scared of starting juju? Somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm scared of starting Juju, but I'm not ready to sit there and plant my flag and say, oh, yeah, this is going to be a big Juju week. I mean, like, I'm at wide receiver 34, so I'm sort of right there. Look, prior to the last game we saw him play, right, Juju had at least 85 yards in three straight games. Now, he, he was the, the last game we saw him play, he was coming off that brutal mm-hmm. hit, the, coming out of the concussion protocol, saw only three targets, which is uh, his, tied for his season low. They just didn't involve him very much uh, in that game. So the expectation here is that he plays more snaps, he runs more routes, he gets more targets in, this, in a high-scoring game. But it's the Chiefs. Again, the Chiefs won last week, and Juju had three targets. Like, they can... They can, you know, they can function kill you. without him. Essentially. They can, yeah. they, right, exactly. The, the only must have in the Chiefs offense is Travis Kelsey. They can beat you in so many ways. And it's, it's just, you know, random. Oh, look, this offensive lineman caught two touchdowns. Like, you know, it's just like, oh, wow, it's a big Noah Gray game. Like, I, so, um, so I'm somewhere in between. I think he is a risk reward wide receiver three in this matchup. And I'm and probably and for me, by the way, I am probably on the more reward side. Like I when you're in those kind of flexy sort of decisions give me the guy that's got Patrick Mahomes throwing to him and as as you know a fantasy rich matchup as Pat calls it yeah I, I'm, I'm on the reward side too it's definitely risky because he didn't run all the routes last week but I'm, I'm kind of assuming that's related to the concussion and him coming back from the concussion they don't really have other guys stepping up in a big way and if Juju's kind of the volume PPR play what a better there's not a better environment than this for a volume PPR there's gonna be a ton of passing volume on both sides our other fantasy-rich matchup of the week is Jaguars at Detroit. The Lions are given a point in this game, so it's essentially almost down to a pick em. The over-under, though, more important here, guys, 51 points. It's crazy when you hear Jacksonville and Detroit almost has the same over-under as Cincinnati, Kansas City, Pat. But how did we get here with these two teams? Well, the Lions, they generally prefer to lean on the run game, which you know can sometimes lead to less volume in a, in a game. But... They prefer to prioritize the pass on first down, even though they're a run first team overall. And that helps set Jared, Jared Goff up for success. And then they also sort of they seem aware of like what's happening in terms of their opponents. They went pass first against the Bills, even though the Bills defense is actually a little weaker against the run. I assume they did that because they understand that Josh Allen was going to score points against them. And, you know, this is another game where you would expect the Jacksonville offense to be able to put up points, obviously not to the level of the Bills, but they also have the fact working for them that the Jaguars are very weak against the pass. So it would make all the sense in the world, not for the Lions to go like super pass heavy here, but to be balanced with a lean to the pass, keeping volume up in this game. And I think they'll be efficient through the air, which would really help, you know, keep scoring high. And then on the Jaguars side, they are a balanced offense, but that's a great fit against the Lions because the Lions are bad against the run. They're bad against the pass. So a balanced offense is going to be very efficient in both phases of the game. We're looking like we're getting ETN back here. So uh, we also have Lawrence running very hot recently. Since week nine, he ranks 10th in EPA per play, leads the league in completion percentage over expected. He's been efficient and accurate. Now gets a great matchup. Uh, this is going to be a fun game. Yeah, I agree. Barry, for you, two players. Lawrence and Goff both made my love list. That's this where week. I was going with yeah. this. Yeah, two players on your love list in this one. So you're obviously pretty high on the the bump that Lawrence, who's had a great three week stretch here, and and even uh, Zay Jones. Did you know that since week six, he's the eighth best quarterback in fantasy, Trevor Lawrence? Like, I mean, like it's you wouldn't quiet. expect it if you yeah. just if you're not looking at any stats and you're just watching the game film yeah. and you're just sort of like, you know, there's been some up and some down uh, with him. But yeah, like by hook or by crook. He's gotten there as well. This is on a points-per-game basis since week six. And so, 
Obviously, it's a great matchup against Detroit. What were we going to say, Connor? No, I just wanted to ask about Zay Jones in this matchup. When you, you talk about Trevor Lawrence being on the love list and Zay Jones kind of coming to life recently. He had almost a 40% target yeah. share last week, right? He's it's now crazy. had double digit targets in two straight games in three of the last five. He's Zay Jones is a good player, right? This is a guy that was drafted very high. He's had kind of a weird career. They paid you him know, like a good player. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. he, 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 went to, uh, he, he went to Buffalo. That didn't work out. Then sort of revitalized his career in uh, with the Raiders, mm -hmm. and then yet yeah, the you know the Christian Kirk contract got all the all the attention. But they went on and they made an they made an investment in Zay Jones, and so you think about the fact that the Lions allow the third most fantasy points to opposing uh, wide receivers, and that we expect a lot of scoring after Christian Kirk. Zay Jones to me is pretty interesting as well. He's also a risk reward wide receiver three, much like Juju is. But I'm in on Zay Jones this week. He also, like I said, made the love list. Our fantasy poor matchup of the week, Barry's Commanders favored by two and a half points going to MetLife Stadium to take on the Giants. The over-under here, Pat, only at 40 and a half. We, we've seen worse point yeah. totals this yeah. year. We've seen plenty in the 30s. It's so yeah. 40 and a half, not the worst. Uh, but why are you down on this game? It's actually because I think uh, Matthew's Commanders have a very good defense. Take command. Uh, they really do. Uh, they're fifth in EPL out per rush. They're ninth in EPL out per dropback. So they're they're good against without you know, Chase Young. Without right. Chase, Chase Young, Chung, a fit, just literally just um, Chase Young just listed as questionable for this game. So there's a chance. Yeah. There's a chance that we see at least some limited snaps from him. Anyway, as you were saying, right? You think this will be a l low scoring game? I do because they 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 have a well rounded defense. The Giants want to run the ball, yes. but they're already struggling with efficiency. Uh, Barkley, in particular, over the last three weeks, he's produced 36 fewer rushing yards than expected per NFL Next Gen. And then on the commander's side, since week seven, only the Titans, Panthers, Falcons, and Bears have been more run heavy than the commanders. That isn't necessarily a bad thing in this matchup because the Giants are weak against the run. They rank, rank just 26th in PFF's run grade. So I think the commanders will be efficient with a run heavy game plan. But when you have two teams that are going to be running the ball, the Giants probably inefficiently. The commanders will probably do so fairly efficiently. But there's just not going to be a ton of volume in this game. Right. So Brian Robinson, like, so Antonio Gibson practicing in a limited fashion today. He's officially listed as questionable for the game. So we'll see, have hopes there. But certainly feels like that even if he's active, maybe he takes a little bit of a backseat here to Brian Robinson, who last year, uh, last week, I should say, had his first career 100 yard game. Had his fourth straight game with over 13 touches. Had 20 receiving yards. Like, they actually started to use him a little bit in the passing game, like, which is not a lot. I mean, I think he got, like, three balls. But still, like, that's more than he normally gets. And so, um, in a game against the Giants, who, you know, struggle somewhat uh, against the run over the last uh, month, they're 24th against the run in terms of most rushing yards allowed per game. I think Brian Robinson has a really good chance. You, you're nervous about the passing game usage, and certainly if Gibson were to miss, that would improve his prospects. But I still think Gibson, I still think Robinson is a must start against the Giants, given the volume, even if he's not the most efficient guy. And honestly, I like Gibson as a flex if he's active as well. I'm more excited about uh, Brian Robinson than Terry McLaurin here, just because wow. I think it fits the yeah. game script a, yeah. a little bit better. This does feel like an NFC East December grinded out kind of game between these two. As long as we're talking this game, though, I think this is interesting. To your point about the uh, how good the commander's defense is, this is a tweet from uh, Ryan Dunleavy, who covers the team uh, for, I believe, the New York Post. Like, does a, uh, does a good job. And so uh, he, this is what he tweeted. Darius Slayton isn't going to practice. Still ill. He's virtually irreplaceable on this roster without major adjustments. Dayball still hopeful he can play on Sunday. Again, that is Ryan D., uh, Dunleavy, who's a NFL reporter for the Post, for the New York Post. And so that sort of becomes interesting. If you know, and I'm assuming I just read the tweet verbatim, but I'm assuming that's what he's inferring, or that's what Dayball basically said that he is. They would need if, if they don't have Darius Slayton, they're going to do major adjustments to this offense. Not an offense that has a lot of other places to go. Uh, Might be 1940s football for the New York I mean, Giants. I mean, they are running out of can, wide receivers. Yeah, can, can Saquon play the Wildcat? You know, yeah. like, I mean. 30, right. 33 carries on deck for Saquon Barkley. <laughs> yeah. All right, workhorse. So, anyway. We're and, going to take a – yep, go ahead. I was, just, I was going to say is that if Gibson were to miss, I don't think there's a one-for-one -one replacement either there. Mm. You see some Curtis Samuels from Jonathan Williams, et cetera. Like, uh, you'd just be really excited about Brian Robinson. We're taking a break, but when we're back, what's on tap? As we look into some of the top matchups for week 13, including that's Justin where Jefferson and Sauce Gardner. What's on tap? Because we're in a bar.
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.